Hey guys, what's up? It's 8 Eric. Today we're going to talk about a 2D platforming game on the Nintendo Switch, which is a genre that actually is picking up some steam on the console. Not too long ago we got a game like Slime Sand, which was a lot like another game that's coming out later, Super Meat Boy. But today's tasty morsel is a game called League of Evil. Sounds kind of scary. I mean, to leak, but an evil leak. So we're going to go ahead and check it out. I'm going to give you my thoughts on the game and let you guys know if it's worth checking out or passing on. Alright guys, so League of Evil, as I mentioned, is a 2D platforming game. Lots of similarities to games such as Slime Son and Super Meat Boy. Now it is a port of a 2011 iOS game that actually operated on touchscreen. It's been ported over to a console and it still has touchscreen capabilities, but I prefer playing with an actual controller, the pro controller so to speak, because when you're playing a platforming game and you have all sorts of precise jumps that you have to make, scientifically speaking, you're going to want to have something to control yourself with and virtual buttons on a phone like this just don't cut it. Well, I will be the first one to say that the controls on League of Evil on the Nintendo Switch are actually rather well. I play with the Pro Controller and I really enjoyed it and even though this is a simple port of a mobile game, it's actually quite addictive. You play as a bionic super agent who's assigned with bringing down the League of Evil. So we're talking Arnold Schwarzenegger commando style here bruh. The game is made up of 140 missions through 4 chapters and is simple. All you do is make your way through these levels, the jump controls are tight, there's a double jump and some wall jumping mechanics. The wall jumping does take a little bit to get used to because you do kind of jump away from the wall no matter how much you push towards the wall and it, it gets a little bit difficult because some of these stages have a lot of obstacles such as spikes and rotating hammer thingies and armed guards that you have to avoid and you know you're gonna die a lot but just having some good wall jumping mechanics would have helped i mean it's not horrible i've played worse it was just something that i noticed overall the character does control pretty tight though pretty tight. The game features sharp yet retro style visuals in like a quasi 8-bit 16-bit form. It's really nice and pleasant to look at. Maybe a little bit too simplistic and as I mentioned each stage has a variety of traps that will basically kill you. When you die there's literally no loading time just like in Super Meat Boy and other games like this. You basically start over at the beginning of the stage. Most of the stages are rather short and even though it is frustrating that you die towards the end of the stage it's there's no checkpoints stuff like that you gotta get good but it doesn't kill too much of time most of these stages can be beat within 30 seconds or a minute or less and you'll be breezing through it's a lot of trial and error of course when it comes to games like this and i, I think it's always gives you that one you know one more try factor when you're trying to play something which is really handy when it comes to a system like the switch that you could take around portably because you're going to be playing you know, in the car or on the airplane or on the bus or waiting in the doctor's office. You always have a quick time to throw down and it's, it gets pretty addictive. You can buy a lot of time on this game. The animation's pretty basic. The enemy selection isn't that great. The level design, everything. Personality is pretty simple, but that goes back to the fact that this was a mobile game. But all that aside, the game's core basic single player concept is pretty decent. I do recommend playing League of Evil in handheld mode just because the characters and levels and everything appear better that way. Everything is just too small in TV mode. Now this game is actually one of few games on the Switch that actually features a level creator that is not half bad. There's every single mechanic that you could think of in this game is available. You can use the touch screen even to drag and drop and select and build these stages. You upload them to a server and you're able to have other users play them and stuff with a code. Unfortunately you don't get the props for a badass stage because there's no username saved or anything like that. But 
if it's a good game a uh, good level and the designers like it they'll put it in a level pack people can download these download packs for a variety of extra levels to play the game and it, essentially it adds a lot of replayability a level editing mode adds that much more levels and i think it's actually a neat little thing that they added on top of this um used in other games like super meat boy didn't have a level editor and stuff like that so that's one thing i think this game actually does have using the level editor both in handhold and dock mode works rather great and the single player campaign and level editor are the only two modes that are able to play there's no multiplayer so it does fall a little bit short on variety of modes as i mentioned there's over 100 missions so that's a little bit good amount of content plus whatever you download from the level editor the game is only 7.99 so that's not too high on price if you're a fan of games like this and you want to get your super meat boy fill out before that game comes to the switch i guess this is worth checking out it's a fun game to play and i personally enjoy this type of genre it's really nice to look at and the level editor just adds a lot of extra replayability and value to the game and well guys that's it for today's review thanks a lot for watching if you're new to the channel drop a subscription a like and a comment below and i'll see you next time peace out